Hello Interwebs, um, 2024, we've had the first Nova delivery of the year and it's got new engines in there. Um, some are iterative changes, some are new part numbers and a name. We've got a B3R Evo, B5R Evo, a GT 5 port Evo and a 9 port on-road Evo version as well. Um, the B3 and B5 remain the same part numbers but they've had iterative changes as well. I thought I'd do a bit of a run through, having done a B5R teardown last year, and look at what's changed over the course of the year. Um, I've taken one apart already, having started a video where I just started taking it apart and I realised it was pointless. So we've got a B5R here taken apart. Um, and you now get one of these cards in the box that includes information on the squish so that's the clearance between top dead center and the bottom of the head button so that's checked on every build you get a hardness and pressure test which gives you the concentricity of the the piston the roundness of it so that's just to show it's assembled correct well machined correctly you also get a, a head shim for 25 percent which initially we started off having engine shim for 25 percent for the uk and then some we added shims for, didn't add shims. It became confusing. We got some delivered without, some had them already added. But it's now clear everybody in the world gets a shim for 16% and everybody gets a shim for 25%. Um, it's dead easy to add it. We'll add it for engines we break in. Um, so that's a 0.1mm shim. The engines come with a 0 0.2 and a 0.3mm already installed with them. Um, so it's at 0 0.5, so it goes up to 0 0.6 for that. But it's a nice touch to include it in there. I know some brands don't include it, tell you to run a, a slightly cooler plug to get around the, the change from 16 to 25%. But I've always been of the mindset that the easiest way, the best way actually, is to alter the shimming of it, um, to alter the burn rate of the fuel. Um, we've had changes to the the head insofar as the logo but this is also <coughs> excuse me the third version of the head effectively they've changed over time i've got one of the older ones here this is one of the, the first generations head that weighed i think about 82 grams i think we're down to 69 roughly now but it's changed material quality of material and design They've gone to nine fins rather than eight, but thinner fins with more airflow through there. So they've increased the surface area because being an air-cooled engine, it's all about airflow over the head to do the cooling, which is what's critical to it. So there was an interim one of that, which was a lightened version of that, but still had the, the thicker fins on it. But this is now the stable head that we've had mid-23 onwards, but now with the Evo logo on it. Another nice touch with these is this black coat in here i was skeptical of that to begin with didn't understand why it was the case but it actually increases heat transfer and i've seen some on-road companies doing it now um i think i might be happy and a few others um who i've noticed do it as well and apparently it helps the heat transfer it's not i have somebody asking is it a ready to run head or something like that but no there's actually science behind it which is interesting another change that's been noted over the, the course of the year um, is this cooling port here below the exhaust port to keep the piston lubricated because the hot side is always on the, the exhaust port side. So you've got the inlet ports on that side and then exhaust port side, that just keeps the piston a little bit cooler. So that's a nice touch. I've seen other brands do it before with a, a hole there or two holes, one on either side, but it's nice to have it, it cooled all across the piston. Um, um, and we've also seen, although the crankcase looks identical externally, changes to the inlet ports on the case, the machining of it. It's difficult to see that. I'll take some photos and post them up separately. But when you look at the two different ones, the older one and the newer one, you can't really see it there. But it is apparent. Um, we've seen a change to the fit of the carb in the crankcase as well. Um, that's apparent on the, these later generations, one where it's a much tighter fit in there. Um, 
and the O-ring. That changed mid-2022, if not earlier, the O-ring fit. Um, so it's been a continual iteration of changes. Um, I know lots of people tried them last year. Lots of you got on very well with them. Some, we acknowledge, did have niggly issues here and there, things that shouldn't have happened. But credit to Nova, they've been the best company I've ever dealt with for sorting out mistakes. Um, I've never dealt with an engine company that was so on it in sorting out errors. Um, I've dealt with lots of engine companies in the past and they've said, user error, user error. And there's times when I thought that's not a user error um, and it's been hard to be caught in the middle of it. But Nova, absolute credit to them. They've done everything they can do, I think, to make it right. Um, and I've got every faith in them. I've always had massive faith. Um, yeah, they work with passion and emotion in ways that oh, you don't always see with every other engine brand. Having worked with some of the Taiwanese ones in the past is very much a production thing. But yeah, the Italians, credit to them. Be it Nova or other Italian engine manufacturers, it's very much a passion-based business. And I'm quite sure... Nova will get there. If not, they have already maybe got there. Just need the recognition. Um, they've taken on several US drivers now as well. Cavallari um, has gone there. Um, he's going to be a credible one. Jorn Newman. Um, I've got back to him respect for Jorn, actually. Um, I spoke to him before he even ran Nova. Um, he's a really good guy. He runs S Works in eighth scale, and he's running Novas now for Nova. Um, I think he's going to do quite well. We've got World Year coming up as well, so that's going to bring some interesting results. Um, and just to look at the other ones as well, the T6 Evo. There's a T6 Evo. That's the Truggy one, and a non Evo. I think the 24 concept for Truggy is going to be really interesting because we've had big block Truggy engines in the past in the market. I remember OS doing a 28 and others. Um, but they're also talking about doing a 24 on-road engine for one eighth on-road, a 24 rather than a 21, which will put a lot less load actually on the engine because they do scream and scream, whereas if they can generate some more torque, it will reduce wear on the, the engines because they're trying to get maximum RPM. And I think if they can reduce RPM output, increased torque, increased gear ratios are going to get the performance without hurting engines for people wanting to do laps and laps. So I think that was a, a genuinely interesting concept um, that I've not seen before in the on-road market. I've seen OS do a 19 off-road engine being the opposite way of doing it um, to increase runtime, but that one didn't work. We'll see if the 24 engine works for on-road. Um, I'll follow that one with interest. But yeah, it's been an interesting year. Um, I wish them all the best. And I'm, yeah, quite sure they're going to have a good year of it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.